Hey guys, we're back working on the Cushman project. In the last episode you saw where we worked on the rear deck lid, it was all smashed in, got that back into shape and the body overall is, is going in the right direction. Now what we're gonna work on is getting the engine and the wheel and everything set up so that this thing will actually move under its own power, which will be a huge step in this project. So I got a rear wheel that's for a mini bike that actually allows you to put a sprocket on either side of the wheel so that we can get it lined up with the, uh, the drive on the motor. And we got a tire that is more uh, for the street and is a little bit wider, so it'll help make the scooter a little more stable. So we're gonna work on trying to get the engine all set up and the rear wheel set up so that we can kind of get this thing closer to actually uh, riding it down the road. All right, so I use these, uh, these heavy duty stands for like everything. You see they're covered in primer. Put car bodies on them. I put all kinds of different stuff on these. They hold a ton of weight, but they're really great for even small jobs like this. I could fold them up, put them in the corner. And like for this, we can just fold them out, put the scooter on them, set them up. I'll throw two little clamps. It's already nice and sturdy, but we'll just throw two little clamps so we don't knock it over if I bump into it. But these things work really great and you can just use them for just about anything. Brake setup on this is like really sketchy. It's like an inside drum. All right, so we got the old uh, wheel and tire off. We got the engine on the bench, and uh, now we got to mount up this tire on the new wheel. There's no real secret to this. Uh, when you're doing these little wheels and tires, it's kind of uh, kind of sucky, but you just gotta lube up the bead, lube up the wheel use some tire irons and just muscle it on there. Not really any different than doing a bicycle tire, uh, just it's gonna fight you a little bit more, but uh, start by putting the wheel on with the first bead. We'll get, we'll get down in the center of the wheel and then we'll just pop everything, everything uh, back, back on once we get to that point. So we're gonna just muscle it on. All right, so I'm actually quite surprised. I was just shooting from the hip and just ordered this wheel because it allowed me to move the sprocket to the other side. And it actually dimensionally fits almost perfect. If not perfect, we can put little spacers on either side of the hub to uh, actually get it to tighten down and fit well. And that also allows us to just space it just a tiny bit if we need to, to get chain alignment a little bit. Um, we could cheat it, but otherwise we can just put two spacers on either side and. This will sit perfect once we put an axle through it. All right, so we got the tire all aired up, which is great. It went like surprisingly smooth, so um, that was nice. So what we have here for parts is we have like this intermediate adapter to put the sprocket on. So it has the bolt pattern that matches this wheel, so you can Slide that guy on like that and take our hardware, um, thread it in. I'll just put two in real quick to, so it holds itself. So you tighten this down. And then what we have, what I like about this is it's really easy to change the sprockets. So we have our sprocket here and it's a split sprocket and the bolt pattern on it matches up with the bolt pattern on our plate. So we can throw that on there. If we ever want to change the gearing, say when we're riding it, we want it to have a higher top end speed or whatever we can just quickly change the gear out by taking the chain off and uh, taking the six bolts out. So we're gonna get all this bolted out and then we can slide it back in and try and get an axle and spacers and everything, see what we need for that.
All right, so we got our sprocket all mounted up like we were showing you, and this, uh, this wheel didn't come with an axle. I wasn't sure if the axle that is meant for this wheel would work with our scooter. So the problem is the scooter, the actual dropouts on the scooter call for a larger size axle than what this wheel uses. So we want a larger diameter uh, that, you know, something on the end where the actual axle slides in versus what's here. So what we're going to do is just take some solid bar stock that I have. We looked online and what is the quote unquote axle is basically like a bolt that goes through the center right here. And what we're gonna do is turn down um, this piece of uh, solid rod stock that I have so that it will slide through here and then we can make little spacers that go on the end that will contact the center of the sealed bearing and then we'll actually actually sit into the dropout opening so it's nice and tight and the axle fits through it so everything fits like it should. So I'm gonna throw this on the lathe, turn this down just a little bit so that everything slips through here and I made it a little long, and then once we get that all set, we can actually cut it down to the length that we need, um, but we can turn this down and get something that fits and works on our cushioning. All right, so I got the axle that we made turned down. I replicated the original axle that was supposed to come with the wheel, and it has a shoulder on the one side, and then the other side is threaded, so you slide everything through, you tighten down the one side, and it pulls tight. Now, what we need to do with this, because of the difference in the frame and the axle and the wheel, is we need to make little uh, like spacers that are going to touch on the bearing, on the inside bearing surface on both sides, and then when we tighten it down, it will tighten on that, and actually ride so that the bearing spins and doesn't bind it. But the first thing I want to do is just tap the end of the uh, of our new axle that I just made. So I have the Eastwood tap kit, tap and die kit here, and we're going to take a die, uh, tap this for half 13. Then we can run a nut with a washer on it. That'll pull everything tight and be uh, good to go. And we have an axle that's uh, something we can put right on the scooter. All right, so I got the rear wheel fitted up. All it took was just a stack of washers on either side to get everything fitting nice and tight. We tightened down the hardware on the side and got it all cinched together, and it's really good. The wheel is free. We may have to clearance just a little bit on the dropout on the side just to get it so that there's absolutely no issues with things hitting or touching, but for now, it's really good. I put the engine back on. I'm happy with that. Next time we're gonna work on is getting the, the clutch on getting the chain all lined up with our new wheel and sprocket, and then hopefully, maybe, we can get it started and moving the rear wheel, which will be really awesome. So that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys following along on the Cushman project. If you want to see any of the tools you saw in this video, you can click the link down below, or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. <laughs> All right, it runs.